Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. All right, big brother. I'm going to go ahead and start praying. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the maker, the creator of the ends of the earth, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, we come before your presence on this morning. God, first of all, thanking you, Father, for who you are and all of your glory. God, we thank you right now. We honor you with the fruit of our lips, oh God. Oh God, you've given us to know in your word, oh God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Oh God, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this opportunity, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we woke up this morning, oh God, with our mind stayed on you. God, we thank you for last night's lying down. We thank you for this morning's rising up. And God, we thank you that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that your name alone is worthy of all praise. God, we pray, God, that you would touch the, our, our teacher on this morning, oh God. Father God, begin to lay your hands, <clears throat> your hands on her, oh God, and touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, we pray for every viewer. We pray for every listener on this morning. God, that you would meet them at the point and level of their every need. God, we thank you for the title of our lesson on this morning, Called to Significance, O oh God. God, we pray, God, that you would uh, uh, just bless us, O oh God, during this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. A amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. My name is Tiffany Greenwood, and this morning we are in for a fired up Sunday school lesson. Fired up. It is call to significance. Call to significance. This is going to be an important lesson for everyone because it is impactful on you directly. This lesson is just for each and every one of us this day. We're coming from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Verse three, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. Verse five, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Verse seven, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Verse 9 for he was astonished and all that were with him and the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. 
verse 11 and when they had brought their ships to land they forsook all and followed him amen our memory verse for today is luke 5 verse 10 and once again it reads jesus said unto simon fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men amen amen this lesson today is going to let us know that god wants us to use each and every one of our gifts and our talents and he wants us to use them to build his kingdom we have uh, some surefire questions today we are up and running on facebook live as well as in zoom so everyone get ready i have i'm a very uh interactive teacher and i want class participation so there's going to be a multitude of questions um, so that we can all learn from one another um, how God is using each and every one of us in our current lives and how we can possibly be better and move, moving forward um, in accomplishing the purpose in which God has for each and every one of us. Because Jesus has called us all to be fishers of men. To be fishers of men. So this story begins in Luke. We are in the Sea of Galilee. And I know that you heard me read that weird, weird name, Lake of Genesaret. And actually the Sea of Galilee has numerous names, has uh, quite a few different names. And they use these names that are for the surrounding cities. So everybody calls it something different, but it's the same Sea of Galilee. And I have been to Israel and I have seen the Sea of Galilee from the direction in which we were coming. We hung this quick left at Mount Carmel and it was a quick descent um, because the Sea of Galilee is below sea level. So that tour bus went down. <laughs> And I was very surprised. I saw so many holy trees. That's what they call olive trees. Holy trees. Um, but then I was amazed to see that there were mangoes growing. And I was just like, wait, what? Mangoes growing. Cotton grows there. Lots of different things were growing. And I was just like, oh, this is just so awesome. And I was just so amazed, like, yes. I'm going to be around the place and be on the same land where Jesus walked. And I can see why Jesus hung out at the Sea of Galilee. This was the hangout spot. This is where everybody could see everybody. Everybody was there. Um, the Sea of Galilee is not much of a sea anymore. It's more like a big lake. <laughs> but um it's still quite a hangout spot um and where you can see all the locals so now let's go on ahead and we're going to start diving into the lesson um jesus had been teaching um around at the, um a lot of the cities um around uh, the sea of galilee and of course when jesus began to teach everybody wanted him to just stay wanted him to hang in there and 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 just 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 stay here just have them to themselves and jesus was just like no i have to go there are other people that need to hear god's word there's other people that i need to teach there's other people that i need to disciple and so he had to leave and i think that it is interesting uh that in this lesson um he had stated in the memory verse luke 5 verse 10 that we're to be fishers of men that means we too have to take that example that jesus has given us and we can't just stay in our one spot where we're happy and we want to be we have to actually 
go. We have to go out. We have to go out. Uh, good morning, everybody on Facebook. I can see you. I can see you. Um, and so um, it's it's we have to be mindful that God wants us to get out. He wants us to disciple others. We have to move out. His mission, Jesus's mission, was not to call others from a single place, not just one place, not just his home, not just his second home, not just his favorite city. It's to call people from everywhere. And that's what we need to be doing as well. We need to reach out and call for a minister to other people in other places in other cities. And this is really awesome. We have that opportunity to do that because we have technology that reaches the masses, right? I said, I said, hi, Facebook Live. Facebook is all over the world, right? And so uh, with that being said, we can get the word out to a number of individuals quickly, quickly, and have the opportunity to interact with one another and grow and grow in the Lord and grow in the Lord. So verse one says, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Genesaret is the Greek name for Sea of Galilee. So he's at the Sea of Galilee, hanging out, doing what he does best, teaching God, teaching God's word teaching and discipling to God's people. And he has been teaching for a while, right? Because he was just in Capernaum. Capernaum is right, right there in the Sea of Galilee. I know, I was right there. I mean, everything is just like, boom, walking distance, sister cities, so close together, so close together. And so um, now that he's just laying back at the Sea of Galilee, He's teaching. He's teaching God's word. And in verse two, it says, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. They had had a long night um, and they were washing their nets and they could be washing their nets because they had caught zero fish it is it, it's, it's it's very 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 discouraging when you have been doing your profession all night hard working trying to get some sort of outcome um some sort of benefit and to have none that is so discouraging so discouraging and these fishermen have been out all night and had caught zero fish and this is their livelihood, right? No fish to sell, that means they have no money. With no money, they're unable to take care of their families. This is discouraging. This is so, so very discouraging. So I have to paint this picture for you because just be thinking about you go to work and you work eight hours and the company is like, you didn't have any output, so we're not going to pay you for today. You're going to be like, wait a minute, I did a lot of work. <laughs> I did a lot of work here. I deserve to be, you know, it's discouraging. And, and, and when it comes to being a fisherman, no fish, no money. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. In verse 3, it says, and he entered into one of the ships with Simon. Simon Peter is who he's talking to, and Simon is the captain of this ship. Simon is in charge of this ship, and so Jesus had prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, okay? And so Jesus is trying to let Simon Peter know, hey, we're going we're gonna to put those nets back out there again. We're going to try this thing again. But before Jesus tells him to cast his nets out, he does what? He sat down and taught the people out of the ship. He taught them first. 
He discipled to them first. Then he's going to have them cast their nets. So here we go. Already, everybody ready on Facebook? Everybody ready on Facebook? My first question is, why were the multitudes so eager to hear Jesus teach? Why were they so eager to hear Jesus teach? Mm -mm -mm. You can unmute yourself. You can tell me on Facebook. I'm looking. I can see you. Because he spoke with so much authority, you know, they hadn't heard nothing like that at, at all their life, you know, with the authority that he had yeah. uh, as he spoke. So, and uh, the things that he was talking about God, you know, that it had been a while since they had someone talking about God and uh, preaching his word, you know, uh, so they were glad to hear things about, about God, okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, um, Elder Bryant. Uh, yes, we Jesus spoke with major authority because he was 100% God at the same time he was 100% man. So he has all the authority. And so when he speaks, it, you, you couldn't hear Jesus speak without being lit up, without being um, engaged and um, encouraged. And, and wanting to do whatever it is that uh, Jesus had for you to do. I mean, he, you were captivated by his words. Why? Because he was speaking the living word, because he was 100% God. And so um, when Jesus is teaching to you, he, he was able to reach everyone. He was able to reach the masses. And I think that this is important for us to understand is that we have the Holy Spirit within us. So we have the ability to do what? The same thing Jesus did. We can also reach the masses. How? By speaking and preaching and teaching on God's word. It's a living word. And it will do what? Just that. It'll reach the masses. It'll reach the masses. I have a second question for you. Why does Jesus choose fishermen to help him in his ministry? Why does Jesus use fishermen to help him in his ministry? There's not just one right answer. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyone? Uh, it could be that he wanted some ex someone with experience already in catching, you know, and, and learning, you know, some somebody already that knew how to catch something. If it was only fish, at least they knew how to catch something. So he wanted somebody with some type of experience with catching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, and notice that fishermen, they're not like this high powered, um, job where they don't use their hands, <laughs> like they have somebody doing everything for them. Fishermen, they get down and dirty. They, they do all the work themselves. Um, and fishermen also, uh, I wanted to say that they know how to work as a team. This is very, very important. You can't catch fish with a net the way that they were. They didn't have no cranes or nothing letting down the net and then using the crane to pull back up. No, they, that was sheer strength that they had to use themselves. That was that was sure enough. Um, they had uh, what we call country strength <laughs> to put them nets in there and then to pull them up themselves. You have to be able to work as a team in order to bring in a, a haul of fish, okay? And so when Jesus is talking to fishermen, he is, he knows that they know how to work as a team. They can work together in catching fish. I also see on Facebook, Nathaniel Williams said, fishermen are also patient. Yes, you have to be patient. When you're trying to disciple to God's people, you know, there's this learning curve. 
And most people don't have a learning curve that just goes straight up. Most people, it's a gradual thing. And maybe there's some dips and dives before they actually arrive. You have to be patient and walk this walk out with certain individuals. You just can't be under the impression that, you know, well, I'm here. I got it. I'm walking with Jesus and you should be too. No, sometimes you have to walk this thing out with them. You have to be patient. And people have their highs and they have their lows. And you need to be there with them during both times so that they know, hey, Jesus is still here with you when you are in good times and when you're in bad times. So, yes, fishermen know how to be patient. And that is an aspect that we need to have as disciples of Jesus Christ. We need to also be patient. We need to be patient. Jesus, he had this way of teaching and preaching and reaching out to people in creative spaces. He didn't always just have to be in the church to teach God's word. He didn't always have to be in the synagogue to teach God's word. He would, he taught God's word wherever he was. The Sea of Galilee, he was standing on a ship teaching, teaching about God, teaching about God's will and his way to who? Fishermen. Jesus had a knack for using creative spaces to teach people of many different backgrounds God's word. We, that's that's a, a, a concept that we have to remember. Just because you're standing in line at the grocery store six feet apart, <laughs> waiting for that person to check out, guess what you could be doing? Talking about God's word. And I love it when I'm standing either in front or behind someone that is heated and hot because they had a bad day and it's taking too long and they're, we're tired of this whole virus thing because that is an opportunity for me to reach out and be like, let me tell you about a man, right? That is an opportunity. And, and to remind them that, you know what? We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. We're all very tired. We're all done and over this whole COVID-19. Let's not play, right? But nevertheless, when it's all said and done, we're in this together. And you have the opportunity to reach out and to tell them about the good news. So verse 4 says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Simon Peter, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for dry. Okay, so now Jesus went on ahead and he talked and he talked about whom God was, sat with them, let them know who he was, how God operates, what kind of man he is, what kind of God he is, what kind of God he can be for them. And then he said, okay, Simon Peter, time to go let out those nets. Yes, those very nets that you had toiled and put out all night long and you caught nothing you caught nothing the same nets that it took three or four of you to sit up there and clean and wrap up and roll up and to get ready for tonight later on that night to go back out to catch fish which is a lot of work Have y'all tried, okay, have you tried to even walk on a net? You know, when I go to the playground with my nieces and nephews, I get on those little cargo nets. I look a hot mess. I'm getting tossed around. I, I mean, it's just beating me up. Okay, so a net, to be cleaning it, and it's not like a little net. I mean, it's a net, y'all. Come on. It's a huge net. It takes three to four men to put in the water to yank up to pull the fish out. Okay, so they were, this is strenuous work. They're working very hard to clean this net. 
And now they have to put this net back out. So uh, that was what Jesus asked them to do. And Simon Peter, Simon Peter is, you know, I just see myself. Every time I read something that Simon Peter had to say, I'm just like, oh, that is just, that's Tiffany. <laughs> Every time I read something, I'm like, oh man, that's, that's me. So in verse five, and Simon answering said unto him, master, Lord, teacher, because he just heard him teach the word of God. We have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. So Simon Peter, and this is me using 21st century vernacular. Look at here, bro. We have been up all night. This is what I do for a living. I have grown up as a fisherman and I know how to fish. I know you catch fish at night. That's when you bring in the most fish. We brought in nothing. We were out all night and brought in nothing. Now in the middle of the day, you want me to take this clean net and put it back in the water during the day when we all know that's not when you catch fish, right? But there's a part B to this because Simon Peter says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So Simon Peter says, okay, though, just because it's you, so I can prove you wrong, because I know what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm going to put my net out. Just because it's you, I'll humor you and put my net out. Verse 6 says, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. They had caught so many fish that their net was breaking. That clean, beautiful net that didn't catch any fish last night in its most prime time hour is now about to break when it's the most unlikely time to catch fish. Simon Peter and verse seven, and they beckoned onto their partners. There was two ships, right? So they were like, yo, get over here. We all can get fish. We all can what? Make money today for our families. We all will have a livelihood just off of this one catch. This one, we have so much, so many fish that we're getting ready to catch in this one. We may not even have to go back out tonight. Which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both, filled both the ships so that they began to sink. They stayed out all night under their own reconnaissance and records, trying to fish and bring in a drop, to bring in some money to no avail. They brought nothing. They had no fish. Now, in a matter of seconds of doing what Jesus has told them, Everybody is making money. Everybody has caught so many fish that they're about to sink their boats. That's how many fish they caught. And I'm thinking to this, look at God. Look at how Jesus works. Because Jesus, not only did he just give them the word of God, but he had to cater to their need. They are what? Fishermen. They need fish in order to survive. And he did what? He provided that need. 
after he disciples to them, he does what? Perform a miracle to show them, hey, as a team, I'm willing to do my part. His part was to do what? Speak the word. Speak the word and told them what to do. He provided the instructions so that they could get a large haul of fish. But then, what did the fishermen have to do? They have a part in this as well, right? They have to do what? Actually follow the instructions. They actually had to go and put out their net. They had to follow the instructions Jesus gave. I have a question. I have a question before I get too excited. Why is Simon's obedience to go fishing again a demonstration of his faith? Why is Simon's obedience to go fishing again a demonstration of his faith? You can unmute yourselves, and I'm looking Facebook. Hi, everybody. I see you. Hey, Amen. I believe that uh, he didn't see, <clears throat> nor did he understand why Jesus was saying what he was saying, but yet he obeyed. Um, nevertheless, uh, or in the meantime, regardless of what I cannot see or what I cannot understand, I'm still going to obey what Jesus is saying or telling me to do. And that's how we have to be. When, when the Lord speaks uh, and tells us to do things, uh, we have to obey. We're not going to always understand why the Lord is telling us to do a certain thing, but our prayer sh uh, should be that Lord, open up the eyes of our hearts, open up the eyes of our understanding so that I can see clearly what you're, you know, what you had me to do. Because, you know, we're supposed to, in the end result, I feel that we're supposed to still get an understanding because the word teaches us that in all thy getting, get an understanding. But that comes later when the Lord tells us to do something. That comes later. Our first action should be obedience. Amen. I, you, you know what, Elder Haskell, I, it's just, just the hitting the nail on the head, hitting the nail on the head. And I just think of when I was a child, I didn't always understand uh, what my mother and father were asking me to do, um, but I never questioned it. I just did what I was told to do. I operated out of obedience. And I learned very early that when you obeyed mama and daddy, there was good things that came out of that. <laughs> uh, um, and, and, and later on, um, when in, in my walk with God, I started to understand um, hearing the, you know, the scriptures, obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, I knew what that meant because um, when you obeyed mama and daddy, uh, you uh, didn't get that uh, Holy Ghost field whooping? Yes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And, 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 that's, and that's what God is trying to lead us to understand. I see on Facebook. Um, oh, thank you, Michi. Uh, Dimitri Greenwood has reminded everyone that they're able to uh, participate in the chat. Absolutely. Because I'm watching. I'm watching. So... I, I can see when you're putting something in the chat. Definitely, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is what Jesus wants us to do. Obedience is what God is, is expecting of us. And when we obey God, when we follow the instructions in which he has given us, guess what? Good things happen. And in this lesson today, Luke 5, we see for Simon Peter, and not just Simon Peter, but both, but both ships came out with a haul of fish, both of them. Why? Because Simon Peter obeyed. It is a blessing. You have the ability 
for multiple people to receive a blessing just off of the mere fact of your obedience. When you obey God, your family is blessed. When you obey God, your neighbors become blessed. When you obey God, the, your colleagues at work are blessed. When you obey God, your classmates in college are blessed. This is important. This is important to know. And remember, when I, I, when, when I started this lesson, I said the key fact is, is that this is going to teach us about teamwork. We can't walk this walk with God without working as a team. It takes all of us doing our part. And I have played team sports my entire life. To this day, I still watch all team sports, all of them, um, because I love the aspect of uh, collaborating, working together, to uh, to come to um, a victorious end. I love that. And I love to watch how teams work together, how they strategize together, how they figure things out together. Although Simon Peter was the captain of the ship, he needed what? Everybody. <laughs> he needed the help of everybody to bring in that haul of fish. Simon Peter can't put the net out himself. Simon Peter cannot um, pull the net up himself. He needs everybody working with him. And that's what we have to remember um, as we go through this walk with Christ, as we're walking with God, as we're following the instructions that the Holy Spirit is giving us. This is a bigger picture. It's not just about me and my household. It's about the church. It's about God's people and how when I don't do my part, I hinder the entire body. I hinder the whole church because of my disobedience. I don't just suffer. Everyone is suffering. Everyone suffers. And, and guess what? The, the, the blessing is now delayed. It's not just delayed for me. It's delayed for everyone. So we have to be cognizant that when God has given us instructions, it's time for us to get to work. It's time for us to do the things that we need to do. Amen. I have another question. Of course. <laughs> when have you had nevertheless faith? When have you personally had nevertheless faith? I have had nevertheless faith. I have experienced nevertheless faith recently with my nieces and nephews. I, I told you when I go to the park with them and I tried to get on that little cargo net thing, that was, mm, that was a disaster kind of thing. Yes. Well, um, you know, uh, my nieces and nephews, they're, they're pretty young. And so they've never really maneuvered on those monkey bars. And so the first time they get on the monkey bars, you know they fall, right? And then I dust them off and I say, you wanna try again? And they kind of look at me like, yeah, I think I wanna try again. And I was just like, yeah, I think you should try again. And this time, what did you learn? What did you learn? What did, when they were like, well, first of all, I think I need to hold on. Yeah, yeah, you, you kind of got to hold on. <laughs> and then uh, you can see that they get back up there anyway. And you know why they get back up there? They get back up there because their aunt is not scared and like, oh, well, you failed, so you shouldn't try that again. No, they get back up there because I'm like, yeah, you can do this. And, and not only can you do this, you're going to enjoy the monkey bars. Like they're fun. Like you could do a lot of cool different things on the monkey bars. And when I see their faces light up and after all of the trying and they just get on up there and then they do it, 
Like they actually swing on the monkey bars. And sometimes, yeah, I have to hold them a little bit to get them to swing from monkey bar to monkey bar. But before you know it, they're just doing it themselves. And that's the kind of nevertheless faith we have to have. I see on Facebook, Dimitri Greenwood says, when it was me in the situation, I have the biggest faith for people, but when it is me, my faith is not as strong. Uh, Dimitri Greenwood, your faith needs to be just as strong for you as it is for everybody else. Why? Because if God can do it for somebody else, he definitely can do it for you. And you have to be under that impression that you know that you know that you know that God's got you. When Jesus had given the instructions to Simon Peter, Simon Peter had to follow the instructions in which were given. And when Simon Peter followed the instructions, what happened? Miracles, right? And so Jesus, God, never put you out there without giving you some instructions. And when God gives you those instructions, follow them. Follow them. Have the faith to know that when I get to the end, I will be successful. Why? Because I follow the instructions that God had given me. And we have to also understand as well, um, success looks different to God than it does to us. We think things should be a certain way and God has things to be a way. <laughs> okay, so let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind that things may not, although that they are successful, that doesn't mean it's unsuccessful because it did, the outcome wasn't what you wanted. The outcome is what God wants. And that is success. The outcome is what God wants and that's success. Amen. Nevertheless, faith means that no matter, no matter what the obstacles are, we're going to obey God's word, no matter what, no matter what, we're going to get back up onto those monkey bars and move forward. We fall off, we dust ourselves off, we start over and we get up and we're going to succeed. We're going to succeed by following the instructions in which God has given us. Obedience equals faith. I'm going to say that one more again. <laughs> Obedience equals faith. That means disobedience equals lack of faith. Let's see what you're saying. Nathaniel Williams, you said we have to encourage each other, lift each other up. Amen. Amen. That is a team player right there. Yes. We're working together. We have to encourage one another and lift one another up. That is how we're successful. That is how we all receive the blessings of God. That is how we all receive the blessings of God. So during this pandemic, let's not, let's not be remiss. We still need to be contacting one another, encouraging and lifting each other up during these times. And hey, I just want to put a little plug out there for all those individuals that you think are really, really strong and they got this. Y'all need to encourage and lift them up as well, because although they have everybody else's back, somebody needs to have their back. Because every now and then, I just want to say it, we have a bad day. So we need some encouragement too. So that was just a little plug for your strong friends and family members. Y'all check in on them, okay? <laughs> Verse 8 says, when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. See, when Simon had followed those instructions that Jesus gave, his intent may not have been because he totally believed what Jesus was saying. He kind of was like, I'm going to put these nets out there so I can let you know. See, I told you, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've been doing this my whole life. I know how to fish and this wasn't going to work. But when his ship 
and the other ship almost sank. Wow, Simon Peter had to come to a realization that, oh man, my intentions weren't pure, were, weren't pure, weren't genuine, and I'm I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man, and he had to um, let Jesus know that. Let Jesus know that, you know. Not 100% knowing Jesus already knew that when he even told him. <laughs> Since he's 100% God and 100% man at the same time. Verse 9 says, For he was astonished. Simon Peter was astonished. And all that were with him. Everybody that was there, not just on the ship, but everybody that was watching Everybody that was seeing what was taking place, what was, you know, you always have some looky loos. Come on now, let's not play. They were there and they were astonished to see like, man, these, they went from not having anything to almost sinking their ships with so many fish, which they had taken. Verse 10 says, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee. This is important. Because there were other people that were blessed. They were in the other ship. And they were blessed by Simon Peter doing what? Following the instructions. Remember I said this is a team thing. When you don't do your part, then other people don't get blessed. And it says, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. Okay, you know how to catch fish, but now this is the important part. This is where we're going. We're going from, uh, you got this little lesson on how to catch fish and how to catch fish in the most inopportune time. Now, let's move from fish to men. I'm going to show you, now that you got that concept, let's show you how to catch men. Verse 11. Actually, I want to say this. Jesus' commission of Simon, who readily admits he is a sinner, lays the groundwork for Jesus' ministry of forgiveness and the growing reputation of Jesus as a friend of sinners. Jesus came not for those that believed in him alone. He came for those that didn't believe in him. And he wanted to admonish to them that I'm here to save you as well. I'm here for us all. Not just some, not just part, not just my favorite, not just the ones I like. I'm here for everyone. Everyone has the ability to ask God for forgiveness and to become one of his disciples and to fish for men. Each and every one of us have that opportunity and ability. Verse 11, our final verse of the day. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They left everything. Everything that they knew, because obviously this man knew more than they did about fishing. And if he knew more about fishing, what else could he enlighten us about? What else could he teach us? What else could he show us? How else could we be blessed by following Jesus? And so that's what they did. They just got up, left everything to follow Jesus. I want to know, I have a question. I have a question. What can we learn from the analogy that Simon will now be a fisher of men? What can we learn from the analogy that Simon will now be a fisher of men? men
it's okay. There's no just one answer. What can we learn from the analogy that Simon will now be a fisher of men? We know that um, as um, fishermen, they understand the concept of how to catch, how to pick the right time of day. They, they knew the right time of day. They knew where to go. They knew the perfect places uh, to get fish. Um, they knew how to be patient and, and wait on the fish. You can't be loud and obnoxious and think that you're going to catch fish, <laughs> right? So you have to be patient and you have to be willing to toil. Sit back and relax a little bit and, and wait for the fish to come to you once you've gone to the right place uh, to catch the fish. So in this analogy, what we can learn is, is that um, in order for us to be a catcher of men, we have to be able to go to the right places. We have to meet people where they are. We have to meet them where they are. The in, individuals that are not saved don't come to church. They don't, they don't come into church. We have to go to them. Okay? And when, when you're sitting in that grocery line waiting to pay for your groceries, the, use those opportunities or at the post office. Um, every, every place has a line. You've got to wait in line for everything, everywhere. Use those as opportunities uh, to catch men, uh, to give them a word from God, to let them know about the good news. Use that opportunity. Use that opportunity. Remember this analogy of fisher, of a fisherman. Using that analogy, use that analogy to help yourselves catch men. Last question of the day. As a disciple, have you left all to follow Jesus? Hi, Dr. Kelly. Um, as a disciple, have you left all to follow Jesus? Why or why not? This is a deep question. This is a deep question. Have you forsaken all to follow Jesus? Why or why not? This is a struggle. This is a struggle for everyone. I see someone unmuted themselves. Elder Haskell. Amen. Amen. God is good. Um, it requires a change. It, it requires an uh, internal change and an external change. Um, the places I used to go, I don't go anymore. The things I used to say, I don't say no more. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Uh, because a change has come over me. That means I have forsaken everything that's not like God. That I have moved in a direction. I've done that 180 to turn my life uh, around by the, with the Lord's help. I have uh, made all the necessary changes to please God. Now, if I change, if, if I were... Uh, I mean, if we haven't left everything, that means uh, the change has not really fully came into fruition. That means we have not really fully left all to, to, uh, to uh, turn our lives around, to, to please God. Uh, we must remember that it's all about God. It's not about us, but it's all about him. And when he 
comes into our lives and changes our lives, uh, we have to be willing to uh, go along with what God has done in our lives. And if we're not, we're going to find ourselves back into the same, falling back into the same traps, doing those same things that we used to do. And we have to be mindful of that. Uh, so that we do not do those things that we used to do. We don't say those things that we used to say, and we don't act like we used to act because the believer is supposed to act out what they believe. That means if we believe the word, we, we must be examples of the word, not just uh, uh, in not just in word, but indeed also. Our works should show that we believe uh what we believe and that's the word amen amen i see that on facebook holly kelly dr kelly says i am determined to keep following him to keep fishing for men um elder haskell dr kelly you are absolutely correct this is a daily task this is, we have to make a conscious effort every day to forsake everything, to follow Jesus. And some days are better than other days. I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, every day I'm perfect and I'm on the straight and narrow and I got the a handle on this thing. Okay? No, some days I fall off. I get derailed. You have to dust yourself off and get back on the track and move forward. And you can't just sit back and think that, well, I'm just going to see what happens. That's not how God operates. This is a, this is a team. This is a team event. <clears throat> God has his part and each one of us have our parts. Each one of us has to do what is expected of us in order for the collective to be blessed, in order for the collective to live a successful life, the successful life that God has for us, not the successful life that we deem for ourselves. I see Dr. Kelly has said, yes, we must be intentional. We must be intentional. Absolutely. Amen. This is, you have to make an effort to want to live for God. It doesn't just happen because you will it. <laughs> no, no. It happens because you do it. It Love is an action word. Faith is also an action word. You have to do it. You have to act it out. Oh, man. This has been such a great lesson. Um, we have four minutes, and I wanted to say, when we meet Jesus, we too must confess that we are sinful and need to be made whole. We should be willing to forsake all and follow Jesus. Jesus is looking for those who humble. Uh, Jesus is looking for those with humble. I'm sorry. Jesus is looking for those with humble hearts to boldly respond to his call by faith. So uh, we need to get up, get out, and get busy. Just because we're in a pandemic time, remember I said we have all this fancy technology and, and I know that y'all are way better at it than I am and I'm going to be contacting some of you as well so that I can get better because we need to get the word of God out there so that we can make sure that people know that we are still catching men and women. We are still living according to God's will in his way. We are still 100% about the Great Commission and letting everybody know the good news of Jesus Christ. Use your gifts and talents. Use your gifts and talents because you have been called for a significance. You have been called personally. Each and every one of us have been called to significance. Not just Jesus, each and every one of us. Because why? We're a team. And in order for us to get through this thing together, we have to work together. Next week, we have a wonderful lesson, Call to Heal. We're going to be in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I hope that we see you all next week. Uh, we are down to a two-minute mark. 
Elder Haskell, thank you so very much for letting me be the teacher today. And if you don't mind praying us out, dear sir, I love everybody. Have a blessed week. Amen. Very quickly, let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank and we praise you right now for all that our eyes have seen and ears have heard. We thank you for this lesson on today, oh God. God, we pray, God, that you have met everyone at the point and level of their every need. God, we pray your blessings upon every family, every household this morning, oh God. God, we pray, God, that you would begin to lay your hands on every person, God. God, that you would move mightily in their midst on today, oh God. Oh God, we pray, God, that you would just have your way. God, even during these unfamiliar times that we're in right now, oh God, with this pandemic, with this uh, social unrest, with this uh, uh, things that are happening around our capital and around our nation, oh God. God, despite it all, Father, we know that you are still in control and we thank you, God. We honor you, we praise you, God, we bless you, we love you and we adore you and we place no one before you. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God, amen.